All right, here we are live in Beijing. I am live in Beijing at the airport in one of the biggest cities. It might even be the biggest city in the world. Actually, I'm not sure. No, I think uh, India has a bigger city. But regardless, I'm in the most populated country in the world uh, in the airport here. Um, I'll give you a quick little glimpse for those of you watching on the YouTube channel. And check it out. The thing is, I've been here since... I've been here for almost 10 hours. <laughs> 10 hours in an airport. I'm starting to feel like Tom Hanks in... Uh, what was that movie Tom Hanks did? When he was in the airport? I can't remember. Um, not Catch Me If You Can. Oh, that was Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks. Anyway, uh, this is the worst I look and the worst I feel uh, that I've ever recorded a live video podcast in. Um, but hey, I flew from Vancouver to China. I was only supposed to be here for just like a, a short little layover that turned into a freaking marathon of, it's going on eight and a half hours now, nine hours actually. I'll be here for a total of 10 hours when this whole thing is said and done. And I wanted to take some time here since I'm living this right now to share some travel tips and travel hacks with you uh, when you go on longer flights and longer trips abroad to help ease the pain of this painful experience of jet lag of of just airports of waiting 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 and also things to help um, you recover better um, and sleep and get rested and rejuvenated while you are traveling so i'm going to share a few things that i always bring on my trips and give you some insights of to what you might want to start packing as well uh, number one is I don't mess around when I try to sleep. This here is the number one Amazon rated uh, sleep mask. Uh, Tim Ferriss recommended this in one of his uh, podcasts. It's called the Sleep Master. So if you want to check that out, it's called the Sleep Master. I'm showing it on the YouTube channel if you want to have a look there if you're listening on iTunes. Uh, it's about 30 bucks. But it's amazing because it also wraps you around, but it also blocks out your ears. So you can see my ears are fully covered. And I bought a number of different ones like this. For my last one. Actually, here, I'm going to show you something. So hold on. I'll be right back. I will show you an example of one that I was really, really excited about to get. I funded their Indiegogo campaign um, and it was a really good idea, but the strap that attached it totally sucked. Um, so it kept on coming undone, the Velcro at the back. It was like this little tiny, like, you know, almost like half an inch <laughs> strap to connect it. But what it had had these padded pillow eyes, um, like eye pillows it was called, that came out from your eyes, so your eyes weren't actually getting compressed by the, uh, by the actual mask, which is really brilliant, but their, their actual, I actually don't have it in this bag, I forgot to put it in my other backpack. Um, so yeah, you want to be careful. Uh, this one here was 30 bucks on Amazon, Sleep Master, check it out. Um, number two is the other thing I do before going on trips and even on trips is boom. These are blue light blocking glasses. I've spoken about these before. Uh, I think that they are phenomenal. I actually have my iPad or, or iPhone always on sleep mode where the display is orange and yellow. Like people look at my phone and they're like, what's wrong with it? I'm like, well, I have it set up where it blocks the blue light because blue light triggers your uh, melatonin. And if you have a lot of blue light, your body doesn't release the melatonin. It's a sleep hormone that allows you to relax and your brain to come down. So I always wear these before and during flights, especially when I'm on my phone or laptop or watching movies. Like I, watch, I wear these while I watch movies on the, uh, the airplane. Um, I didn't even watch a movie on the fl flight over. I slept a whole like nine hours and, I, and then I was just eating for like the last hour. So I had probably one of the best flights from Vancouver to uh, Beijing here, but I've been stranded now for 10 hours. So traveling total time, 20 hours, and I still have another flight to Korea that's going to be another few hours. So these things 
They seem simple, but they really do come in handy. So I'm gonna take these off. Uh, the next thing are these, which are super, super game changers. If you're a light sleeper, I'm gonna take this out of my ear. This here is a real ear pod. It's kind of like silly putty, but it form, uh, it actually custom fits into your ear design because it's like silly putty. Um, this here you can get online on Amazon. This brand was called, uh, I want to say Max. I want to say Max. So I have two of these that I got and you know, they're way, way, way better than the typical foamy, you know, ones that you put in and really don't block out any noise. I put these in and I literally sleep through my alarm clock. Like it's that, you know, it's like you're in a, you're, you're in a, a float tank. So for blocking out the sound, this is the best thing on the market for sure. Um, I, I wear these to sleep and I wear these around my uh, place actually. And I got a pair from my mom. My mom, my mom wears these out grocery shopping actually <laughs> because she hates just loud and, and things like that. Um, as far as sleep, what I do, you can see this here. I take half of a, um, I guess it's a, a type of sleeping pill. You have different options. You have things like Xanax or uh, you have things like um, Valium or other kind of sleeping aid pills. I wouldn't recommend doing this all the time. I only take half of one when I travel. Um, I'm, Ambient is actually probably my favorite, um, which just really, I took half of one last night and I, I was knocked out for nine hours because I don't take substances or pharmaceuticals or drugs ever, pretty much. So my body is sensitive to it. So I take a small dosage and, I, and I'm out. The other thing is for, whoops, when you're in an enclosed airplane for a long time, your eyes get really, really dry, or at least mine do, because I had LASIK eye surgery. So here you go, just a bottle of eye drops, really basic, but really makes a big difference. Um, yeah, this helps me out a lot as someone who has had LASIK, LASIK eye surgery. Um, yeah, I, I really don't leave home without these. And the last thing, or almost the last thing, is it's really important to invest in a good boom it looks super lame if it doesn't even feel the best but if you get a good one that's high enough you just boom can conk out really easily and for me i'm a pretty sensitive sleeper and having something to just support my neck because um, usually i'm really tall so my head is above the seat just like my head now is above this camera because i'm just sitting on this ledge um, it helps a lot and what else do I want to say? The last thing is I've gotten into essential oils. I just did an absolutely phenomenal uh, interview with a essential oils expert that talks about all the different kind of concoction uh, cocktails almost you can make and create through these um, health and wellness oils that can contribute to uh, boosting your immune system while you travel, um, relaxation. Uh, it, it's really phenomenal. I really recommend people go check out the podcast on uh, essential oils. Uh, it was about an hour and went totally in depth with resources where you can kind of try some out yourself. Uh, and I've just been doing those for my respiratory and um, immune system. I take them every day. So it's been really, really great. Um, so that's what I would say for travel hacks. Uh, the other biggest thing, this is like the gem of a lifetime. What I've done, um, especially uh, recently that I have been doing a lot of longer flights, is, you know, they try and charge you for everything. You know what I mean? They're hitting you up for everything. And I just got kind of sick of paying for the emergency exit rope. So I'm like 6'7". I'm like over two meters tall. So I got sick of paying for that because I figured out there's a way to get it for free. So if you want to know what that is, 
well, here's where this came from. So on my way back uh, a month ago, flying from here uh, to from China to Vancouver, I had a connecting flight here. But when I walked on the plane, I accidentally gave my ticket that was my connecting flight or my first leg of the flight from Busan to to Beijing. I gave that on my ticket from Beijing to Vancouver, not even knowing. And they're just like, oh, okay, here you go, sir. And it was first class. I was like in the first class, full on like champagne, face towels, recliner bed. And I walked in and I'm like, sat down because they seated me there. And I'm like, is this, are you sure this is my ticket? And like, sure? I'm like, yeah, 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 this is your seat. And it was weird because I asked at the desk when I was checking in, I'm like, you know, is there any way I can get a seat with extra leg room? And, uh, and she's like, oh, I'll see what I can do. And she's like, no, sorry, there's an extra charge. And I'm like, yeah, that's okay. Um, and then, and then I got seated at this like freaking massive, luxurious first class seat for like ten hours. Um, but the thing was, what happened was, uh, a guy came and he's like, I think you're in my seat. And I'm like, well, here's my ticket. And the stewardess came back and she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like this, this isn't this flight. You're on the wrong flight. I was like, oh my god. Like where's this flight going? And like it was going to Vancouver. I'm like, no, I'm going to Vancouver. And then it turned out that I gave her the stub of my first ticket. So I realized that even in first class, they don't really, uh, not, not that they don't check, but I'm not saying to sneak into first class, but what I am saying is, so after that happened, I was like, damn. So I had to go back to the back, the walk of shame to the economy section. And, but when I was walking back, cause I was the last person, and here's the tip, I was the last person to be boarding and walking down the aisle, everyone else was seated so I could scope out what seats were uh, vacant. And I saw this amazing emergency exit seat right at the front of like the next section that had a huge leg room, a window seat. And I knew no one's behind me. No one else is going to take this seat. The gate's closed. So, you know, Big Quentin just sat down and, you know, enjoyed a amazing uh an amazing um free emergency exit row seat uh, after being you know escorted out of first class by accident um so so yeah the the thing is if you go on you're the last one to get on the plane walk down don't go into the first class obviously but you go into the uh you go into the uh oh it looks like they're boarding my yeah i think i gotta wrap this up so I'm going to wait, actually. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. I'm going to wait here until every single person has gotten on this plane. And right when they're doing the final call, that's when I step on and cruise into my emergency exit row that, uh, that I can have a relaxing flight with. I hope you enjoyed that. Hit up the comments. What are some of your biggest travel tips and hacks that you'd use? Um, Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing more videos like this and also on iTunes. So please comment, like, support, share it, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm out of here, China. Thanks, Beijing. This 10 hours was, yeah, I'm used to it. Whatever. It's life. I'm alive. I can't complain. See ya.